Hey, my friends, welcome back to another episode of the Euro Cooking Connect. Thanks for spending the part of your day with me. And guys, I hope you're all super well. Guys, on today's segment of Memories of Malta, we're going to be making something that's very endearing to the Maltese Islands and quite traditional. Today, we're making aliotta, and that is the traditional Maltese fish soup. Now guys, there's many ways to make this, but I'm going to give you some tips and tricks along the way and some alternatives. So without further ado, let's get in my kitchen and make traditional Maltese aliotta. Aya. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the kitchen countertop. Before we go ahead with the recipe for our aliotta, there's a couple really important things we need to discuss with you. And that's the two main ingredients that is the most important in your aliotta. Of course, that's your fish and your stock. Let's talk about the fish first. Now, you can really use any type of fish you want. In Malta, the lampuki is used quite a bit. You may know it as mahi-mahi. I'm using a white fish. You can use grouper, sea bream, sea bass, anything you really like, guys. Um, salmon is not quite used. No oily fish is really used in an aliota. Um, some people also add shellfish. Um, you can have clams, you can have razor clams, you can have mussels, and some people even add shrimp. So that's your fish. What I'm using, like I said, is a white fish, and I wash this, and you just want to break it up into pieces or cut it up into pieces, which we'll do later because the fish doesn't take long to cook. Depending on the fish you're using, look to see how long the cooking time is. This goes in near the end. If you are making your own stock, you would do something different. Right here, guys, I have some fish stock. This is just fish bouillon cubes that I've used. Now, again, traditionally, you would have gotten some little fish heads, some uh, body parts with the fillets removed, tails, whatever, and you would have put them in a small bouquet garni, tied it up, put it in your water to make your fish broth in your soup. Um, today, you'll even see some large, like, metal um, diffusers, kind of like a tea diffuser that you put your fish parts into. Now you can go to your fishmonger and ask for little fish heads and things like that. I know they also sell um, fish heads for fish head soup. Um, however, this is a cleaner and easier way for most of us nowadays to do it. So I've just um, bought some fish bouillon cubes and I made my fish stock. Okay, so that's the first element, guys. So guys, as far as your vegetables and fruit goes, what I have here is one large onion that I've roughly chopped. I have a few cloves of garlic, again, roughly sliced or chopped. I have a couple of vegetable marrow, which will help extend the soup, give it some more body. Now, if you can't find um, vegetable marrow or what we call arabali here in Malta, you can use zucchini or a variegated zucchini. However, I would add them in later if you're using zucchini. I also have here one small carrot, which I'm going to grate. So with your arabali, I've taken the top and bottom off. Simply going to slice. And then I'm going to um, cube them up. 
do a couple at a time. Now I also have some peas and I'm using frozen peas, about a handful and that's optional guys it's up to you so you're going to need some peas so I'll continue chopping my arabali or vegetable marrow and like I said with the carrot we just want to grate one small carrot And I'll continue to do that and then we're gonna head to the stove all right guys so I have my vegetable marrow garlic peas onion and grated carrot and we're gonna need a couple of slices of lemon now there's many ways many many ways to make aliota um, but this is trying to stick to a traditional flavor and profile that I really like and I'm sure you will too so guys, let's head to the stove. Hey guys, so I have my onions in my pan here with a bit of oil and I'm sauteing them. And what I want to get is a little bit of color and they are starting, although it's probably hard to tell with the light, but they are starting to color up a little bit. I have my heat on medium high and I'm going to continue doing this with my onions. They're almost where I want them. So what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and add my garlic. And my carrots and I'm going to continue sauteing these together until like I said we accumulate just a little bit of color and I'll show you what I do then alright guys I'm achieving a little bit of color on my onions and I don't want my garlic to burn so at this point I'm going to go ahead and add in a few fennel seeds just a few might as well use up what I have in there <laughs> Give this a quick stir to release the oils from the fennel seeds. I'm going to season with a little bit of salt, sea salt, some cracked black pepper. And then what I'm going to add are some herbs, just a little at this time. I want a pinch or so of some mint. If you have fresh mint, that would be nice. I would add it later. A little pinch of dried mint, and we can adjust later. And I'm also going to add a bit of dried marjoram. And I'm rubbing it between my fingers to release their essential oils. All right, things are moving along quickly. The onions are starting to get a bit caramelized. So I'm going to make a little hole in the center. And at this point, I'm going to add some conserva or tomato paste. We want about a tablespoon.
or thereabouts. <laughs> Pass that around. And then what I'm going to add carefully is one can of pulpa. Or stewed tomatoes. Now guys, you can use fresh tomatoes. Completely up to you. You can use diced tomatoes in a can. I'm just going to help the tomatoes along by giving them a bit of a mash with my spoon here. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn my heat down. And we're going to go ahead and add our stock. Again, guys, you can make your homemade stock up to you. So in goes about two liters of stock. I'm going to, like I said, turn this down to a simmer and we're going to let this simmer for a while and I'll bring you back then. However, before you do that, sorry guys, add in a couple of slices of lemon. All right, so let her slimmer, simmer down, simmer down. Guys, as you're allowing your soup broth to simmer, taste it. For seasoning and adjust if you need more dry herbs or salt pepper go ahead and add them in I'm also going to go ahead and add a couple of bay leaves I've tasted mine I adjusted just slightly with a bit more marjoram and mint salt level is great and I'm gonna let this go until all of the tomatoes pretty much break down and we'll be back. All right guys, my soup has simmered and the tomatoes have broken down. Um, <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna remove the lemon pieces. So I don't want it to get bitter, but they're still nice and intact. Guys, don't forget, all of the ingredients and the quantities I'm using will be below in the description bar. Just click on show more. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add our vegetable marrow or arabali or zucchini if you're using it. In that goes. Last bit. And at this point, guys, when you're simmering your soup, um, you could put in your fillets or pieces of fish, cook them, and then shred them or cut them up. But because I'm using a very delicate white fish, I'm going to add it in now. All I've done is simply cut it up into pieces. Go ahead and add the fish in. And I'm going to let this now cook until the vegetable marrow is soft and the fish is cooked through. Again, guys, check what type of fish you're using and how long it takes to cook. I'm going to give this about 15 minutes and come back and check it then. It's 
smells so good in here. You can remove the bay leaves if you want. If you leave them in, just be careful that you don't uh, serve them up. I'll be back in 50 minutes, two seconds your time. Hey guys, so the fish is pretty much cooked now. The vegetable marrow has softened. I'm going to go ahead and add my peas as the last element. Get them all in there. In the meantime, guys, what I've gone ahead and done is I have boiled some rice. Because you're going to need some rice in our soup. But we don't add it to the soup because it will get too thick. So, two minutes and we'll serve it up. Hey guys, time to serve up our Aliota Maltese traditional soup. So I'm going to start off. with some nice rice on the bottom of my bowl. Not too much. Then I'll start to ladle in our fish soup. Mm. Guys, I wish you had smell-o-vision. <laughs> it smells so good in here. Men's broth, of course. I have some Maltese crusty bread. For dipping and some lemon wedges. Mm. So good. Put a little bit of lemon in here. Mm. Mm, my mouth is watery. I'm <laughs> gonna give it a try. So a piece of fish here. Hot. Mm. Oh my god. So good. Dip some bread. Mmm. So good. Guys, it's so fresh, it's so tasty, and you're gonna love it. I'm not actually a huge fish fan. And I love this soup because it's so mild. Guys, thank you so much for watching this segment of Memories of Malta here with the Euro Cooking Canuck. Guys, please, please keep safe. We're still not out of the water. Take care of yourself and each other. Few pics to follow. Follow me on social media. Subscribe if you haven't. Until we meet again, thank you so much. Grazie, Hafna. Ciao, ciao.